Hello YouTubes! We are starting a new project today. I want to make me an Apocalypse War Club to match my uh, big old uh, uh, my big old mechanical arm I made. And I'm still going to finish yet. I want to do this sort of the same way I made the femur bones. I want to have a Nightmare Maker skull. We're going to use a number six open mouth skull. I want to use just the top part of the jaw and I'll shave the bottom off. I want to put that on the head of the uh, club. And much like our bone femurs, I want to put the other one on the bottom. So we'll have like a fused bone type of uh, uh, war club. So we're going to do it the same way. I've got some uh, conduit I had left over from the uh, bone handles build. I went ahead and just welded a nut on the inside. Uh, and that way I could screw this together and once they're screwed in, they're never coming apart. So I want to foam up a skull and put this in the head and this should lock it into place. This is just a food service tray. You know, you put foil in the trays and you put a little candle underneath them. That's what keeps them hot like potatoes and stuff at banquets. That's all this is. I kind of cobble welded everything together. Made it where I could stick this piece in there and thread it in so that once the skull is done and the femur is done, this will be the femur bone. And I've got some holes drilled in so the rigid foam will get in there. Um, I'm just going to shove this whole thing into the skull mold. We're going to mix it up. I'm going to hold it in there while the skull is curing. And then when I unscrew this thing, uh, hopefully it unscrews. I've got some anti-seize on the end. We should be good to go. So I'm going to bring you guys in, and we're going to mix up some foam, and we're going to see this sucker go into action. So let's do that. Okay, our skull mold is ready to go. It's already strapped together. This keeps it from wanting to bulge out while it's, uh, while it's curing. I've got my pre-measured cups, so I know exactly what these ratios are to make a full skull. skull. So that's my master cup, I save that. I've got this other cup, half the resin's in already. I've just got to mark the other half, or pour the other half in up to the mark, and we're good to go. We can mix, dump in, and then we'll put the top half of our club in and let it cure in there. Never done this before, so I'm hoping it works out good. So if I epic fail, you saw it first here on Cobwebs and Candlesticks. All right, we're in. And again, this is our bitty six pound mold. It's the same thing I use for all the Nightmares Maker stuff and, our, uh, and the Bone Handles project. So I want to get that nice and creamy, like uh, coffee. Again, not a coffee guy. And while I'm stirring this, I'm going to go ahead and install this and just sort of drop it in and see where I want it. That way it's in the hole already. And then once I see this stuff start to foam up and I feel the heat kick off in my hand, then I know it's time to go. So I don't want any streaks in there, just like you guys see me when I make my other, other Nightmare Maker skulls and femurs and stuff like that. Okay. I think we're good. I start to feel the heat. All right, let's dump it in there. All right, just like so. And if it goes past the thing, the arm, that's okay. Try and get it all in there because I'm going to shave back what we don't use. All right, we're going to call that good. This guy's trash. All right, I'm going to swish this around a little bit, let it bite into the face. I really like to keep it above that jawline in there. Um, so the less shaving around I have to do, the better. I'm going to go ahead and switch this around to make a nice skin on the inside of that silicone. Again, it's a Nightmares Makers low mold. I just love their stuff. They just make awesome, beautiful molds. So I'm going to hold this in there. Oh, it's already starting to foam up. You can see it's starting to raise already. So I'm going to hold this guy in place to make sure it's locked down. And I'd say right about there or so. And then uh, I'll come back. And I'll show you guys when this thing starts to overflow and lock this thing down, where we're at, what it looks like. Okay, YouTube, so it's been about 10 minutes or so. The foam's kind of stiff. It's still pretty warm. I'm going to try and unscrew the pipe. Oh, yes, okay, so the little anti-seized helped. I want to get this pipe out of there so we can pour up our femur. Like I said, when these guys were all shaved down, this uh, bone handle should fit right into the skull. Going the wrong way. Okay. So if you look, there's my little path. All I gotta do is shave down all the way there to get to the bolt, and I'm good to go. So we'll let this sit aside for a while, because you really want to let this sit for about eh, 20 minutes, half an hour or so. Let it get nice and cured first. I went ahead and got my femur ready. Now that we got our handle out, I'm gonna clean the handle off, get the excess anti-seize off. Okay, we're good. I also have a uh, femur cup done. So I know my ratios to pour a femur are these lines right here. So I'm already ready to go on the mark. One, two, three. So we're gonna go right up to 
here on the cup. So I want to set this guy down in there. I know this is going to be my end. I want that big part of the femur on the end. I'm going to drop this pipe in there. Even the pipe's kind of warm from carrying in the foam, so that's pretty wild. But again, this stuff is just awesome stuff. I'm going to slide it all the way up to the top. See if I can't get a little, little hole access right there. I just don't want to sit in there right. It's okay. All right. Let's do this. Okay. I just want to make sure I can hold that pipe down so it doesn't push it to the top of the uh, to the top of the mold. So let's go ahead and top off our our bitty foam. We're gonna go ahead and mix it. All right, and we're good. Okay, so again, I just love playing with rigid foam. This stuff is so awesome. It makes such cool projects. You can fiberglass it, you can paint it. I mean, it takes the abuse. And this prop will last for a ton of years. And I'll probably fiberglass this one and two. I want to put some spikes in the skull's heads. Uh, I just want to make it totally APOC. So I think it'll make an awesome, uh, awesome cool weapon. I just, I just love building weapons. All right. I think we're good. I can feel the heat. I'm going to hold the pipe down. And then we're just going to pour in the trench. I'm going to do a little at both ends. Then I want to fill up that trench, and this will all self-level. All right. It's already kind of rising to the top. I'm going to get every last bit out of there, get it expanded inside that mold. All right. And that is junk. All right, it's starting to come up. I'll hold the pipe into place. Move it around a little bit and get in there. All right. All right, I'm gonna let this expand. You guys can see it's already starting to rise. I'm gonna hold the pipe into place. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll demold these and I'll start shaving them down. I'll screw the two pieces together. And when we come back, I'll have a whole one piece uh, weapon started. And then we can start doing the cool stuff like dressing it up and I'll shave it down. And I think I wanna add some kind of teeth to it or something like that, I'm not sure yet. But uh, we're gonna do that. Once this is all set and cured, like I said, I'll come back after it's shaved down and put together, and we'll start working on it again. Okay, YouTubes. So I got everything kind of shaved down. It's ready to go. I've got a little gap there. I've got the uh, bone facing the way I want it. Feels pretty good and hefty. I'm happy with it. So now I've got this little gap right here that I got to deal with. So I'm going to take just a baking uh, silicone baking mat. I'm going to wrap it around the neck and use some little, uh, I don't know, these are office clamps or something like that, whatever they are. I'm gonna stretch this around the neck. I'm gonna see if I can't make a little reservoir to go ahead and pour in some more and fill that little gap in there. So that's my plan, that's what I'm gonna do next. And then basically start ready to shave this thing down, get it all dialed in, uh, put some fiberglass on it maybe, start putting some spikes in the head. I don't know what we're gonna do yet, but uh, we'll figure it out. But so far I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this little area in with the same rigid foam. I'll just pour up a little bit and make a little dam for it. And uh, the head will basically be done. All our foam work will be done. It'll be down to shaving and on to the cool details. Okay, YouTube, so it's been a couple of days. I went ahead and worked on the skull. I got everything shaved down like I wanted it to. Now it all looks like it's one piece, kind of all fused together. I'm pretty happy with it. I went ahead and drilled a hole through the handle. I'll put a ring in there somehow. Um, I got ahead, or I went ahead and I primed the whole thing after I shaped it down with just Zinsser primer. This is just white primer you use for uh, construction and stuff. Makes a nice hard kind of uh, encasing over the foam. And then I went ahead and just hit everything with a satin ivory 2X. Um, this way, I didn't want a really white, bright white tone. That's the apocalypse, so I want everything filthy and grimy. So we're basically to the point where we can start decking this guy out right now. So my first plan is, I want to throw some spikes on this guy in uh, random patterns. So I've got a bunch of, bunch of spikes I had that were just different pour-ups um, left over from when I had made my mold. So anytime I had leftover stuff, I just poured them into here. So I've got a whole bunch of spikes. Uh, my plan is to take a quarter inch dowel and put a dowel in the center and then poke it in the skull where I want it and then I'll glue it down. Uh, I'll bring it in and I'll show you the process. It's gonna be a super easy, super fast way to do this thing. Okay, so I got this bronze spike here. It's pretty cool. It's missing a little bit of the tip, whatever. Uh, I went ahead and I just took a piece of uh, quarter inch dowel I got off Amazon. I think you get like 50 for, I don't know, like uh, X amount of dollars. They're pretty cheap. 
I think they were like nine bucks. So I've got just a pencil sharpener here with a quarter inch dowel. I'm just gonna go ahead and shave off the ends a little bit. So I get that nice little uh, spike to help me stab into the rigid foam. And I'm gonna clean this other end just like this. So now I'm ready to go ahead and drill a hole. I'm gonna do a quarter inch hole since this is a quarter inch spike. I'm gonna insert this in and glue it in with some E6000. And then I'll drill some holes in the skull and I'll put them where I want them. But it's a super easy process. You see my little cordless drill here. I should probably wear a glove for this. Okay, so we're done. We got our little hole right there. Got our quarter inch dowel already cut. Again, E6000 is clear glue. I love this stuff. It'll set up and dry after we're uh, done messing with it. So we'll just dab a little in there. And we'll take our little dowel that we had cut earlier. I just like to kind of spin it into place. Wipe a little bit on the surface. And bam, we're done. We're gonna let this guy dry for a little bit. We're gonna put some holes in the skull. I think I wanna go down the center, I think, maybe a little to the sides, because I've also got a bunch of little gears I poured up. I'll show you guys those. Um, these I poured up. I got the little uh, thing off Amazon. These were just little, uh, I think these were $10 for both these, or $8, something like this, these little silicone molds. And I just took a bunch of my, uh, the same Smooth On 3, uh, 325. I put some transparent uh, mica powder in there. Uh, 325, this is great stuff. I love this stuff. Uh, this is what I made all my monster magnets with. And I made up a whole bunch of gears. So I'm also thinking I might put a big massive hole in the side of his head and, and, and eat it out. And then put a bunch of gears sticking out sideways, whatever. Um, so that's my plan too. So I wanna get spikes in. I wanna cut some holes in the skull and put some random gears in for texture and for sticking out of the side so it looks nastier. And then I went ahead and I want to put it on a single eyeball on this guy, I think. Um, I think I'm going to do like a lime green. Again, this is just a quarter inch dowel with I think a one inch ball at the end of it. I'll go ahead and spray paint this. I'll cut it. It'll be real easy just like the other one. Again, the pencil sharpener. Easiest hack. Alright. Now I'll shave that down. And I'm good to go. Now I got an eyeball. Uh, I gotta get this guy painted up. I wanna get some spikes in his head. I'll probably put some holes in his head and start lining some gears up in there sticking out. And uh, we'll start decking this guy out. So come back in a second and I'll show where we're at. Okay, YouTubes, we're getting there. I got all the spikes glued in. I used my secret weapon from the dollar store. Ground paprika. Looks just like rust. that will settle into all that uh, E6000 spikes. I didn't hot glue anything in, I'm not a fan. And the reason I use the dowels is because I never glue anything to the surface in case it gets dropped and they'll knock right off. That's stupid and weak, and I don't like building crappy stuff. So I got my green eyeball sprayed and put in there. I went ahead and used the uh, bright green color because it's the same color as the eyes on my Apocalypse War belt. So I'm gonna let this dry, I don't wanna mess with it too much more so that this E6000 can set up. But so far so good, I'm happy with it. Uh, before I knock the holes in the side of the head and put some gears in, I want to go ahead and put some cybernetic teeth on this guy. Um, I've got these from last year from Target. They were clearance on Halloween. They're just chrome fingernails. Um, I think I got them for, I don't know, maybe probably a dollar or two dollars here. So my plan is I want to use this as teeth on the skull. I want to cut them short so it looks like some kind of cybernetic teeth. So I'm going to line his little grill with these and then on the very top of each tooth, I'm gonna put a brass screw in there. So I got a bunch of these brass screws. I think that'll really look cool and set off the, uh, the chrome teeth. And then I'll cut them short and I'll make them a little bit jagged and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and install his teeth. And then I think we're basically ready to go ahead and start knocking holes in the side of his head. I'll do that with a die grinder. I'm gonna start gluing some gears together and putting gears out of the side of his head. And I am gonna wrap him eventually in probably the same material that's on my APOC, uh, my APOC war belt, probably the red. The red looks pretty cool. And then I wanna stain this whole thing and throw some bunch of crap at it. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and knock his teeth out. And when we come back, I wanna start uh, taking all the little gears I made and putting gears on the side of his head. Okay, YouTube's teeth are done. Went ahead and uh, used five minute epoxy. Just DevCon five minute epoxy. It works fast and I hate freaking waiting. So I got the teeth in, put some screws in. So teeth is done. I'm real happy. Um, I want to do the gears now. I got everything glued in. This is all E6000 on top. Uh, so we're good to go there. 
Uh, I want to do the gears now. I went ahead and took this guy and knocked some holes in with my die grinder. I want to go through all these little plastic gears that I made up and put a bunch of gears in the slots and cut them up and slide them in there. It makes some more protrusions sticking out of this guy's head. So I want to load this guy's sides of his heads up with gear, with gears. And I want to put a little pupil on this eye. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, UV resin because it's super fast. I've never used that yet. This is just a little black light flashlight I got off Amazon. You can see his eye is uh, UV reactive. Bink! So I got a couple of metal gears that I picked out. And I want to do sort of like a little iris on this side. Something small that doesn't stick out far. Because I still want you to be able to see that green in there. Maybe this guy right here. Maybe he'll sit right on the lens and look cool. Actually, I think that looks pretty cool. I just want something that's not too big, but you can see the green behind it. It's backwards. Something like that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out a gear. Which one are we going to rock? I don't know. Maybe this one. I kind of like this one. There's enough room in there. That looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I put the little ring on there for his pupil. I got it set where I want it. Uh, this stuff does come in a dark bottle. It is uh, Decor Room uh, UV Resin. I think it was like 15 bucks or 16 bucks for this little bottle on Amazon. I'll try and link my Amazon list below that I use. Um, it's not an affiliated list, it's just stuff that I like to lose from uh, Amazon for most of my projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit on there. And this will basically glue this ring in place. Make it nice and glossy on the surface. It looks like an eyeball. Bam, done. All right, bottle that back up. I'm gonna take my little UV flashlight, and it don't take long. This stuff cures in like 30 or 40 seconds. And my flashlight is actually running out of batteries, so it's actually low, otherwise it would work faster. And I'll go ahead and I'll probably epoxy the whole eyeball in anyways, just so I can pick up that green light. So if I'm black light with this thing, it'll show up nice and, and uh, green. And I'll probably go ahead and take some kind of gear and I'll cover the other hole. Something like so. Not sure yet. But I want to get this green, uh, this gear knocked out. And show you guys how cool UV, UV resin is. And it's already picking up some of that green. But now we got a nice little uh, pupil on that thing. Makes it look mechanical. Alright, let's check it. That's it. That's how fast that stuff is. It'd be faster, but my light bulbs are, my batteries are getting bad on my little light bulb. So that's how fast it is. You're glued in place. You ain't got to wait for crazy glue. You ain't got to wait two or three minutes for resin. You can just pull a little bit out as you need it, and it's transparent. So that's even cool. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use some E6000. I'm going to get all these gears jammed into place, and then I want to stain this guy black and put a whole lot of oil looking nasty stank on him. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do um, his gears now. I'm going to jam gears in there and glue them all up. And then when I come back, I want to stain this whole thing because I want to do a handle wrap on them too. All right, what do you guys think so far? I've been kind of just dropping gears in there, smashing little holes in. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to UV resin them in just to kind of hurry up and lock them into place. I just been going ahead and cutting these little gears in half with a hacksaw. They just slide right apart and just taking little bits and pieces and piecing them together. So that's what I want to the other side look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish all these gears up. When we come back, we're gonna stain this whole bad boy down. I want to add some mounting tabs and some fake uh, bolt heads in the back with some uh, foam to look like metal strips. And uh, we'll just about be ready to wrap this guy and finish him up, do little final touches, and we'll call him done. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, YouTubes, our gears are done. I got them all. Uh, Resin, UV resin in, put the light on them, stuck it outside for a little bit. I'm pretty happy with it. Added a little gear here. I threw a couple in the throats. Um, I'm pretty happy with where they, all the gears are, but he's really clean, so I want to put some nasty stank on him. So I've got some uh, black ebony minwax. Uh, super cool stuff. I usually don't go this dark, but I figured for something that's uh, APOC, I want that oily, greasy, nasty, filthy stank look. So I just want to use... Uh, Probably my old uh, shop towels or my old shop rags. I use these for wiping down the car before I paint it or in between coats of paint. There's already a bunch of grime and color on here, so I love taking stain off of these and keeping all the nastiness and the funk right back on my part. So let's just go ahead and bang this out. Dip in. Oh, yeah. I want to coat this whole thing. Get down on them gears. Now that's looking cool. 
All right. Nasty rig. Now you can see all those little pits and grimy nastiness and all them gears and you can see the details in them. I'm just going to go over everything. I think one coat will probably do it. Maybe I'll throw some other colors on there. Maybe some rust too. I don't know. Oh, I should just throw some paprika on top of there. Ooh, that's looking cool. That's already cool right there. All right, get my nasty rags on there. All right, I'm going to go through. I'm going to stain everything. I'm going to stain the ends. I'm gonna, not going to stain the middle because I'm going to wrap this thing with some duck cloth left over from my uh, APOC belt. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this thing out and stain it, put the stank on it. We come back, this thing will be done. We'll be ready to wrap this thing. Okay, YouTubes, we're all stained. I'm pretty happy with it. I got everything blacked out with the black stain, the ebony. Wiped it down. I was happy with it. I went back and hit it with some uh, Rust-Oleum concrete stain. This is burnt brick. It's a transparent color. They make for uh, staining your patios and stuff like that. Uh, it was the same, basically, the same family I used on my uh, bone door handles, except for I used the yellow color on that one. So we're all locked down. The stain's good. I went ahead and buffed everything uh, kind of with a scotch bright to make it the right color I want. Got a lot of stink down in there on the gears and everything. So last couple of details I want to do is I want to make some, uh, some fake straps that looks like the skull's being strapped down to the... Uh, to the bone handle so i went on amazon and i found these little ice cube trays or little honeycombs and i went ahead and filled them up with uh, fiberglass resin and made a bunch of fake bolt heads i mean these things are cool they're fiberglass you can glue them on something you know um they're the nice size for nice big thick bolt heads you can put them on tables or furniture or machinery or anything be super cool so i cast up a bunch of these in just fiberglass resin I drilled a quarter inch hole in the back side, then I crazy glued a dowel inside. Uh, just like I said before with the spikes, the same way I got them doweled in, because I don't like gluing anything to the server, because if you drop it, it'll come off, or somebody will touch it and knock it off. That's sort of a cheap, uh, uh, a shortcut to me, I don't like that. So I got these guys made up. I made about, eh, I think like one, two, three, six of them or so. I'm gonna take some of this little uh, paper foam. I'm gonna cut some straps out that I wanna put on the handle. Something like so. So I want to put a couple of these guys in. I want to strap the handle to the bone. And then I'll put uh, a hole in it with a quarter inch hole. And I'll go ahead and sink that in there. And I'll drill one onto the head. And I'll probably do maybe two. I don't know, maybe three. So I'm going to go ahead and knock these little straps out. And then I'll heat gun them to make them tightened. So I can dry brush over them later. And then I want to do the, we'll wrap the handle last. And then we'll call this guy done. Okay, YouTubes. Big finish. I got the little straps on. I'll dry brush those later on. I went ahead and heat gun them to stretch them out a little bit. I'm really happy with everything. I think we'll go ahead and do a nice handle wrap and we'll call this guy done. He's good to go and maybe down the road we'll add some more. I don't know. Um, I was at Joann's like last year and I found some duck cloth remnants. And duck cloth is pretty expensive. I think I got this guy for three or four dollars. It's a one whole yard. So I cut a strip off and I just folded it in half and I ran my uh, wire brush across it. So what I'm going to do for bulk is I'm going to fold this thing in half, roughly. It don't have to be perfect. I'm going to fold it in half all the way down. I'm going to use some uh, wildwood, wildwood contact cement on just the bottom layer. I always, anytime I'm doing fur or I'm wrapping something, I always put the contact cement on the first layer. So I'll do that on the bottom, let that set up, and then I'll go around the rest of the handle and I'll spray Super 77. And when I get to the top of the handle, when I'm finished wrapping it, I'm going to go back to the contact cement just to make sure it's locked down nice and good so it won't come loose. So I'm going to go ahead and brush a little on here, just around the base. I don't want to go too crazy. So I'm going to go around here. And I'm going to do right here onto the fabric. And I'm going to double up on this and wrap it all the way up. So in about 10 minutes, this is going to set up. Then I'll be able to stick this on this, and then I'll start wrapping this thing. And when I come back, uh, this whole handle will be wrapped. And we'll take a final look at this thing. We'll throw some satin clear on it, and we'll call her done. All right, YouTube, you guys ready to see this thing? I went ahead and finished it up. I threw my APOC belt on, just so I can have my matching accessory. This bad boy's done. Check him out. I went ahead and wrapped the handle like I said I would. I went ahead and took a little piece of the foam that I used for the uh, metal straps, and I went ahead and put it around the top of the the uh, handle just for the hell of it. Put some little uh, decorative thumbtacks in there and crazy glued them into place. Just as little like a uh, decorative element. 
and I'll probably sand these down, maybe rust them too. But I'm really super happy with the way this thing came out. I mean, it just looks so gnarly. I put a coat of satin clear on it. Um, it turned out great. Like I said, the green eye shows up real good in black light. You can see his mechanical teeth there with the brass screws I put in there. Here's all the uh, plastic uh, uh, gears I molded up out of that little Amazon mold. Went ahead and put the fake bolts in there that I molded up out of another Amazon mold that was made for ice cube trays and the handle. I got a big, like I said, a uh, fuel line ring in there. And I just kind of ground in all the uh, stains and stuff like that. I gave the... Uh, the red duck cloth, the quick sand, but that's how it turned out. Um, I'm super thrilled with it. It looks great with my APOC belt. One day I'll get to finish this whole costume. I got my mechanical arm. I still got to paint yet, but man, I'm super happy with this thing. Um, if you guys like it, hey, leave me a comment. If you get a chance, go see my brother in the trio, the trio of terror of Vic Springston on his channel or David the Weird Kid Show channel. We're going to be building nonstop until Halloween. We got a lot of projects in the uh, pipe coming. So if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, hey, stick around. We got a whole lot more coming. So this is my Apocalypse War Club. I hope you guys dig it. And I will see you in the next time, in the next one. And until I do, you guys always keep it evil. Thanks so much for watching.